Okay, welcome back. This is uh, part two of uh, a deep dive on um, measuring RDS on of silicon carbide MOSFET with a 2461 source meter. So as we discussed in part one, I'm using two different source meters, one to control the gate, and then I've got my high current source meter between the drain and the source. Um, we're going after RDS on, which by data sheet requires us to put uh, 20 volts on the gate and uh, put 10 amps pulsed into the uh, drain, measure the voltage and report the R. So and we're gonna get typically 160 milliohms, um, 196 milliohms max. And this is kind of a static photo of, of, of the setup there where I'm just uh, manually operating this uh, uh, 2450 to put 20 volts out to the gate and then this is my four wire connections up to the device for the for the high high current one okay so I want to talk a little bit about well how do we do this 10 amp pulse and how do we get the measurements of the of the voltage that occurred during that during that pulse okay so the 2461 has got two different types of A to D converter in it. So, um, and by the way, I'm in just power on default uh, conditions right now. But so if I hit this quick set button, and then with the function here, click that, okay, two different types of A to D converter. With the measure tab, this will be using the integrating A to D converter but we are gonna be doing pulse mode, so we need to be able to get our measurements uh, quickly. So there are also a pair of one mega um, sample per second digitizing A to Ds in here. So for this RDS on measurement, I'm going to source current and digitize the voltage. Okay. Now, the next thing to consider is since I've got a, a time deterministic measurement, you know, e.g. I need to get this measurement under a pulse condition. Changing ranges is not uh, gonna be compatible with, with that. So, so we do need to kind of think ahead about, well, what, what range is appropriate for the voltage measurement? So I'm gonna put 10 amps into, say, you know, 140 milliohms, I'm gonna get 1.4. So on the voltage ranging, if I hit this, drop down like you can see my choices so you know two volts should cover um, the uh, uh, expected uh, 1.4 volt out of that so um, selecting a two volt range allows me to have a voltage limit during current sourcing of uh, as much as 2.1 so the range here and the limit are going inter to interact a little bit okay so now in order to set up the pulse, we've got to make a couple other changes. So under the measure, I'm going to come into the settings and I want to set this to the four wire sensing. So I have connected the remote sense lines, but now I need to configure the instrument to utilize them. Okay, in the previous step when, when under the quick set, when we said source current and digitize voltage, then that brought into effect uh, settings appropriate for that digitizer. And for now, let's just accept the defaults. I'm going to press the menu button. So the only thing I changed under measure was was the four wire mode. Okay, menu button. Next thing I want to do now is I want to configure this pulse. So let's just start with a, a simple pulse drain. We're going to pulse from a bias condition of zero amps up to 10 amps. Um, the pulse width, I'm going to start with a 500 microsecond. Okay, now there's a duty cycle imposition here too, uh, 10%. So let me set my off time to 5 millis. Okay, so the voltage limit during the bias current, say 1, 1, but during the pulse, during the high energy portion, we, we have a separate limit that we can set. So in my case, I need more than a volt, right? I'm going to push 10 amps into 140 milliohms. So I'm going to go for the 2 volt limit that I can have with that um, 
two volt measure range that I have have there. Okay, so if I generate now, if I pop down to back to the menu, and if I go to the reading table, that's just old data. If I press the run button, there's my pulse. So I can scroll down and we'll see, let me back up. So you see there, say at index number 50, we've got the uh, 9.97 uh, amps of source value and a reading of 1.4360. So divide those two and we have our, um, our RDS on. Now, just to um, really highlight and drive some things home, let me um, let me show you this a scope ball on here too. So I also have um, I have a current probe wired in here, and I have a differential voltage probe um, across the uh, VDS. So I'm going to turn the gate voltage off, and I'm going to physically remove the MOSFET from the uh, test fixture. Okay, and so now when I run this, okay, so it looks pretty misshapen over here. Over here on the scope, we can see the the current just basically didn't even get off the floor, and but our voltage went up, and we're you know two, so we're at our compliance limit on the voltage immediately. So, and then likewise on the instrument, you can see our source value here, and let me. Let me scroll it down to you know point number 50, where before we had data, we're still um, you know zero amps there. So let me put the device back in the socket, turn my gate voltage back on, and run it. And now we have on our scope, we've got we got our uh, voltage and our current. And I've got these measurements here configured to um, measure between, give me the, the mean value just between the two cursors. So you can see I've got kind of the final 100 microseconds before we turn off the pulse. And I'm coming in with uh, 9.852 and 1.483 volts, which is going to be um, a similar uh, uh, values to what I'm getting you know, off the source meter.